Let's do one calculation uh, to give you some experience on how you derive the center of mass. I'll take a simple case. I, will, I won't take a hammer. It's a little bit complicated. I will take three masses which are held together by very unphysical, by massless rods, say. Then I have three point masses, and that makes my life a little easier. Let this be the y-axis, and this the x-axis. And here at zero, I have a mass m. At a distance l, I have here a mass 2m. This is also L, and this is also L, so this is an equilateral triangle. These are massless rods, and here I have a mass M. And I'm asking you, where is the center of mass? So you have three point masses, and they are connected with massless rods. Well, for those of you who have a good feeling for symmetry, they would say certainly it has to lie somewhere on this line. And it's probably slanted in the direction of the 2m, so it will probably be somewhere here. And so this will be the position vector r center of mass. And the individual position vectors from the origin here will be this, and this will be a position vector to this object. And the position vector to this object is zero. And so now we can calculate the position of the center of mass as follows. We know that the total mass, which is 4m, times the position vector, our center of mass, I go all the way up there on the blackboard, that's my definition for a center of mass, equals the sum of the individual masses times their position vector. So it is the sum over i, m of i times r i. And this i goes from 1 to 3. Now, this is a vectorial equation, and whenever we have a vectorial equation, it sometimes pays off to split it into two components, a y and two an x component. And so in the x direction, of course, the same equation holds for the x components of these vectors. So now I have that 4m times the x component of the center of mass equals this mass times the x component of its position vector, which is zero, plus this mass, which is 2m, times the x position, which is l, so plus 2m times l, plus this mass times the x component of this mass, which is 1 half l. So that gives me plus 1 half m times l. My m goes, and so I get that x center of mass equals 2 and a half, divided by 4, that is 5 eighths L. So we were not too far off where we put it. Now in the y direction, you can do exactly the same. You can split it up into the position vector of this object, which is uh, 1 half L square root 3. This one has no y component, and this one has no y component. So this is very easy. So you're going to get that 4m, times y of the center of mass equals this mass m times the y component of that position vector, and that is one half l square root of three. And so you lose your m, and so you see that y center of mass then becomes the square root of three divided by eight times l. And I think that's about 0.22 l very roughly. Yes. And so you see that we didn't put it in so badly. It's about one-fifth of this distance. It's about one-fifth higher than this distance. And so you can calculate the center of mass. That's really not too hard if you have discrete points. If you have a car or if you have an object like this, then it is, of course, much harder to calculate the center of mass.